Good day ladies and welcome back to the SKB office. Today we'll check out the many add-ons plugged into and stuck onto my poor Quest 2 HMD which honestly at this stage looks like it's on freaking emergency life support. Aesthetics aside all of these serve a number of functional, comfort related and quality of life purposes and really enhance the experience of what I and many others consider to be the VR headset that is unmatched in both its low price point as well as the lingering foul taste in my mouth every time I'm reminded of the company behind it. Which makes me both a doofus and a hypocrite. Thanks Mark! By the way, you can find links to all products used in this video in the description below. Let's go! First off, let's have a look at this VR cover I purchased back in January, I believe. There's just something about the quality of the original padding that comes with your Quest 2 that screams cheap, scrubby and toxic. It just doesn't feel nice on the perfect complexion of my skin and I much preferred the padding used on the original Quest, much like I preferred the colors of its OLED panels. Or the head strap, or the absence of Marky Mark spyware. Okay, who am I kidding? It's always been there. Anyway, I digress. Uh, VR cover adds tons of comfort, uh, is easily washable and comes in a set of two. Uh, one thicker pad for you uh, spectacle wearing junkies out there, of which I happen to be one, if I'm not uh, wearing my contacts. And a thinner pad for, I suppose, everyone else. I should probably mention that you can't use the VR cover with the original step up included with your Quest 2 and some glasses are simply too thick to comfortably fit in between, just as my brother Michel. For him the VR cover is all the way up there with some of the most useless birthday gifts I've ever bestowed upon him. Of which there were many, by the way. Next up is the HTC Vive Deluxe Audio Strap, simply known as the DAS or DAS. Does boards. Much has been said and written about this unofficial Quest and Quest 2 add-on. You can check out our comparison video up here, but suffice to say that its popularity stems from what I would still describe as both the most comfortable way to use your Oculus Quest, as well as a relic, pardon my choice of words, from the quote unquote olden days when alternatives were far and few between. Its price is also all over the place, especially here in Europe, and highly depends on availability through online vendors or from secondhand sources, which happens to be how I got mine. The desk comes with a very nice sounding pair of headphones and I would still fully recommend it if you can find one and are willing to spend um, between 70 to maybe 80 buckaroos. Uh, anything above that and I would simply pick one of the many great and oftentimes cheaper alternatives out there. Such as the cheap Halo head straps from the Ali Bami Choo Choo Express or one of the elite strap knockoffs which may or may not be more resilient than the original counterparts. Good job on that by the way Mark. More on these in one of our upcoming videos by the way. Of course you will also need to find a way to attach the DAS to your Quest 1 or Quest 2 HMD and lucky for us there are many many ways to get the job done. Velcro straps worked out for some folks, but if you're aiming for more lasting and perhaps more appealing results, you can order one of the many adapters available on Amazon, eBay or Etsy, which is where I got mine. The adapters I'm using can be ordered with an optional set of lock plates, which do a fantastic job of truly keeping your desk secure to your HMD. Plus they're available in this nice color called Smoke, which is indeed a damn close match to the creamy white, almost light grayish color of the Quest 2. But perhaps I'm just colorblind. Wouldn't come as the biggest shock of my life, honestly. Last, but certainly not least, is this very nice and secure battery mount made by the same fine dudes or dudettes who did the DAS adapter I'm using. I've ordered mine in the same color as the aforementioned clickety doos and they're attached to the back of the strap using both a hook and velcro straps. And there's just no way this thing is ever gonna come off by itself. Unless your battery of course decides to go into meltdown. Hmm. Nah. 
quality of these 3D printed parts is really astounding and I can absolutely recommend this battery mount if you're in need of more juice and less downtime. I didn't really need one but it is nice to not have to worry about plugging your Quest into a charger every time you put it down given the somewhat limited battery capacity of the headset itself. Plus a battery pack of roughly 10,000 milliamp hours will Add some nice counterweight and make your desk even more comfortable. Oh wow! I probably should have gone with a different 90 degree angle USB-C cable but oh well f it, stupid me. So there you have it folks, I've got a lot more crap headed my way, plus another special episode in which I'm gonna put yet another gunstock through its paces. Check out my previous video on the Sunlaki magnetic gunstock while you're at it. And please let us know if you have any intentions of modifying your quest or other HMDs and what surgeries exactly you're gonna perform on them. As always, thank you everyone for joining, please like this video if you didn't think it was complete trash, subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this and please do hit that bell icon if your heart wasn't chiseled out of stone anyway take care and bye for now oh yeah